Welcome to the first video of chapter one. This is section one, expressions and formulas. There's two objectives for today's video. The first one is to evaluate expressions using the order of operations. The second objective is to use a formula. Both of these should be review. You definitely covered them in algebra one and in geometry, and you probably saw them in middle school also. So this should be a review. Today's video is no calculator. So a lot of this stuff you've done before with a calculator. Well, today you're not allowed to use a calculator. So if you have it out, put it away. First objective is to use the order of operations. So we should probably start by talking about or reviewing what is the order of operations. You probably learned an acronym in middle school or freshman year for the order of operations. The way to remember the order of operations is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So PEMDAS, maybe the other one that you heard. P stands for parentheses. E stands for exponents. M stands for multiply. D stands for divide. A stands for add and S stands for subtract. So you're always going to start out with parentheses. If there's parentheses, you do whatever's inside of those parentheses first. Then you're going to move on to exponents. If there's any exponents, you're going to do that. Multiply and divide go together. So you read from left to right. So if multiplication comes first, you do that. If division comes first, you do that. And then add and subtract also go together. So you write add first, but re add first in order, but really you do add and subtract together. Start from the left, go to the right, whatever comes first you do. It's probably best if we just jump right into example number one. So it says evaluate m plus p all over p minus 1 squared if m equals 3 and p equals negative 4. So the way that you want to start these problems is always by substituting in numbers. So m add p is going to be 3 add negative 4 over negative 4 minus 1 squared. Okay, don't try to do this all in your head. Substitute the numbers in. Now, order of operations, P comes first, parentheses. So I definitely have parentheses in that denominator. Okay, so negative 4, subtract 1. That's going to be like adding a negative 1. So negative 4, add negative 1 is going to give me negative 5 squared. I'm going to keep it in parentheses so that I square correctly. Now here's the tricky part. Anytime you're looking at a fraction like we have here, the numerator is always in parentheses, and the denominator is in parentheses. So I'm going to have to do that numerator also. It's like the parentheses are implied that they're there. So the 3 add negative 4 is going to be negative 1. Okay, so that's P. Now I'm going to leave the negative 5 in parentheses. There's nothing to do inside of the parentheses, which is why I'm not simplifying anymore. Now I'm going to go on to E, exponents. So negative 5 squared, that's negative 5 multiplied by negative 5, which is positive 25. And then negative 1 stays in the numerator. Then I move on to multiply divide. Well, this is a fraction. I could do negative 1 divided by 25, but I'm just going to leave the fraction the way it is. Um, there's no more simplifying. So we don't have any more multiplying, dividing, adding, or subtracting. So this is my answer, negative 1 over 25. And we would like you to leave your answer in a fraction when possible. Okay, so let's move on to example number two. I'm going to do this one with you also. It says evaluate the expression. It gives you some expression for h equals 4, j equals negative 1, and k equals 0 0.5. So again, I'm going to start by substituting in all of those numbers. Don't skip any steps, so don't skip this step. So I have negative 1 squared, subtract 3. I have h squared, so 4 squared times k, which is 0 0.5, divided by j, which is negative 1, plus hk, so plus 4 times 0 0.5. Okay, so you're going to notice that I added some parentheses in. I added these parentheses just to separate numbers so that it didn't look so cluttered. We can't quite see all of our order of operations, so I'm going to write that to the right. Remember that our order of operations is please excuse my dear Aunt Sally or PEMDAS, Okay, so we're going to start with parentheses. 
So I added a bunch of parentheses in just to separate numbers, but is there anything that needs to be done inside of those parentheses? No. I don't have any adding or subtracting or multiplying and dividing inside of the parentheses, so we don't have any p that we need to take care of. e, on the other hand, exponents, we do. We have this negative 1 squared, and we have this 4 squared. Okay, so negative 1 squared is going to give me positive 1. 4 squared is going to give me 16. I have no more exponents, so everything stays the same. Now, I have m and d. Remember that these go together. So I'm going to start at the left. I'm going to read right, and any multiplication or division that comes up, I'm going to do. So 1 minus, okay, my first multiplication division comes right here. Okay, so I have 3 times 16. 2 times 16 is 32. So 3 times 16 is going to be 48. So I have 48 multiplied by 0 0.5 divided by negative 1. Now multiplying by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is just a half. So I'm just taking half of 48. Half of 48 is 24. So I really have 24 divided by negative 1. Okay, so I still have the 1 minus. Then all of this is the same as 24 divided by negative 1. 24 divided by negative 1 is going to give me negative 24. Plus, and then you're going to notice I have one more multiplication. I have 4 multiplied by 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is just a half, so half of 4 is going to give me 2. So that comes right down there to give me the 2. Okay, so that takes care of multiplying and dividing. Now, we're not finished, so I'm going to recopy this expression up here. I have 1 subtract negative 24 add 2. Now I'm on to the last part of order of operations, and that's the adding and subtracting part. Again, starting at the left, reading right, whatever comes first is what I'm going to do. So I have 1 subtract negative 24. The subtracting a negative adds, adds to be a positive. So 1 add 24 is going to be 25 add 2. 25 add 2 is going to give me 27. So that's the final answer for example 2 is 27. Okay, so that was our first objective. That was using the order of operations. Now we're going to move on to example 3, which includes using a formula. So let's read this one together. It says the formula for the volume of a rectangular prism is V equals LWH, where L represents the length, W represents the width, and H represents the height. Find the volume of a rectangular prism with a length of 4 feet, a width of 2 feet, and a height of 3.5 feet. Okay, so we're going to start by rewriting that formula. So this is a formula you should have seen before. Volume equals length times width times height. Now here's where the question comes in. Find the volume. Find the volume so I don't know the volume. I'm going to have V equals of a rectangular prism where the length is 4. So for, instead of L, I'm going to write 4. The width is 2. And the height is 3.5. Okay, so now all I have to do is multiply. Well, 4 times 2, that should be easy. That should be 8. So now I get my volume to be 8 multiplied by 3.5. Okay, I know that one's tricky. We can't, probably can't do that one in our head. Well, 8 times 3 is 24. 8 times a half is 4. So 24 add 4 is going to give me 28. So I get the volume to be 28. And please remember that volume is always units cubed. So the volume is 28 feet cubed. So that's pretty easy. For this section, I'm going to give you a formula, and all you have to do is substitute those numbers into the formula. So those were the two objectives, order of operations and using a formula. Before we are finished, you have two examples to go. So please flip the page. Okay, here's the first one. Example 4, it says evaluate the expression for n equals negative 2 and b equals 3. Right now, I only want you to do example four. So pause the video and do example four on your own, please. Good luck. All 
Okay, let's see how we did. First thing I'm going to do is substitu substitute those numbers in. So I have 6 times negative 2 squared divided by 3. Add 2 times negative 2 times 3. So order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Okay, parentheses. I don't have anything inside of the parentheses to do. Exponents. I definitely have exponents. I have this negative 2 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is going to give me positive 4. And now I'm going to bring, bring everything else down. Okay, now I'm on to multiply and divide. So, starting at the left side, 6 multiplied by 4 is going to give me 24. So this is where I'm looking. So I have 24 divided by 3, which is going to give me 8. And then I have all of this multiplication to do. So 2 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 4. Negative 4 multiplied by 3 is going to give me negative 12. Okay, so that includes the multiplying and dividing. Now all I have left is adding. 8 add negative 12 is going to be negative 4. So hopefully you got that on your own without a calculator. If not, hopefully you see the mistake that you made. Again, this is easy in the calculator, but we are not going to be giving you a calculator in class when you do this. Okay, you have one more example to do on your own, and that's example number five. So right now you're going to pause the video and do example five on your own, please. Good luck. Okay, so for example 5, your answer should be negative 7 over 8. If you didn't get that, then you did something wrong. When you come to class tomorrow, we will be checking to see that you have this problem completed with work and the correct answer. Please make sure you go back and rework the problem if you did something wrong. See you tomorrow.